Okay, I'm going to get into some pretty heavy spoilers in this one, so just be aware, you know, this is not for the people who have not yet watched the movie. I suppose I should start by saying I haven't actually watched the other two Candyman movies, but first of all, why would you make a profit, obviously? Other than that, there's no reason to make a follow-up. You don't need a follow-up. It's a perfectly self-contained story. We need more of those, by the way. It's not... It, it's not the kind of thing that you really need a sequel to, or even should make a sequel to. Where else is there to go? I mean, you can interpret it a number of different ways. I've, I've heard the theory that it was all in her head, and she really was just insane. But the, the theory that I support the most would have to be that his power... I mean, I don't know how much physical power he has, but I'd say his power is mainly in... I mean, I mean his power comes from people believing in him, and I would say that he more influences... I personally do think that he made Helen kill those people. As has been pointed out before, she was the key. She was the reason that they were losing um, belief in the Candyman. Um, because she got that um, gang leader uh, who named himself the Candyman to evoke that image. Um, she put him away. And he really was responsible for the, the two, the, the kid in the, um, the bathroom and uh, Ru Ruthie Jean. So his power lies in the um, in that people believe in him and at the end of the film you know he... Um, I'm gonna get back to the ending in a bit but at the end she's the new one, she's the new myth the, the new urban legend and you know um, Berkeley says her name five times, first is a kind of whisper but if you listen real close I think it is there, and she comes and she kills him, and then, you know, Stacy the slut is there, and yeah, we, we don't know if she actually, um, if she's then blamed for his death. I mean, there wasn't any blood on the knife, but she was holding a knife. I, I don't know, but why would you make more? There's nothing more to say. It was a perfect. You know, at the beginning of the film, you're not sure if he does exist. Near the middle point or so, maybe a little more towards the latter um, third or so, you realize he is definitely, in some form, real. Um, and at the end, he's gone and she's taken over. Because people believed that she was responsible for those killings. And at the end of the day... Maybe it doesn't matter so much if she really was, because it's the myth, it's the legend that gives her that power. And she's taken over as the new Candyman. I don't know how many people are actually going to stand in front of a mirror and say Helen five times, but that's going to make for really awkward situations if there's like a young couple and the girl's name is Helen and he's standing in front of the mirror and she's like, you know they're getting it on and he says her name five times but okay the ending I've heard some people say it was disappointing that he was so easy to kill I think I don't think it was I mean yes he had some physical form there at the end but I don't think that it had to do with you know the fact that he just burns up and you know you see the sparks of him um, disappearing dissipating but I think it was the defiance, the fact that she managed to prove that you can get away from him, because I don't think anybody had ever done that before. It was always, if the Candyman comes to get you, it's, you know, it's like the Boogeyman. If he comes to get you, you are gone. Just, you know, there's, there's no chance you're going to make it. And she proved that he could be defied. She got the baby out in time, you know. I personally think that was what, you know, when, because you see the, the, the group that lit the fire, you see them kind of, you know, their eyes and their reaction, I think that was her proving you can defy this guy, and that was it, when people stopped, not, not when they stopped believing that he existed, because that just prompted him to try to, you know, reassert himself, prove that he does exist, 
No, it was when she proved he can be beaten, then he was gone, because that was the core. The, those uh, people in the Cabrini Green, they were the, the main reason why he had any power at all. And when it was proven to them that he's not all-powerful, that was it. And then she becomes the new one. I don't know if anyone is unclear on why she died, because, you know, she, we did see her crawl out, but her hair was, like, burned off, and we saw some fire on her, um, on her upper back as well. I would say, I mean, if we're going with just, you know, what can kill you, uh, realistically in the real world also, I'd say third degree burns. I'd say she, um, she had lost so much skin. What, what happens is you, um, uh, you dehydrate because there's no skin to keep the, um, you know, the liquid from pouring out. And we need water, so, you know, there, there are actual stories of people who've been uh, burned and hours later, you know, they might have lasted the night and then died uh, from the dehydration. I love the fact that it can be interpreted in, in different ways, and I think the the idea, the the way it um, it kind of says it was the idea that made him, because he wasn't a bad guy in life. He wasn't a killer. There was nothing, um, I mean, we're not told anything about him that would make us, um, you know, feel anything but sympathy for him. And once he... Um, you know, and then he becomes this myth, this legend, because people believe that he's, you know, going for vengeance, and it's like, um, like black people living in ghettos, you know. For so long, white people just pushed them aside and just, you know, tolerated their, um, their being there, um, after the, uh, um, abolition of slavery, and they weren't given a chance for, for regular jobs, they, you know, they couldn't get an education. It was simply not allowed, and the only way that, and, and white people kept thinking, oh, they're bad, they're criminals, and then a lot of black people had to become criminals just to make it because they weren't allowed jobs. How else are they going to put food on the table? And I, I just love the way uh, the film and Clive Barker, I would think, if it's in his original story, and I tend to believe that that to be the case. You know, the way it comments on racism, and if enough people believe in something, it will be true. I... That was a fantastic point, um, and I think the film made it beautifully. Some people um, have a hard time believing that and, and I'm not saying it's for sure the truth, just... I, I tend to believe that she did kill all the people that Candyman seemed to kill. I don't personally think he had physical power. I, not from what we see in the movie. Maybe he had before. I don't know. Maybe he got physical power there at the end again. Um, but apart from that, I, I think his power was... To influence, maybe because she had made the, um, you know, made the belief waver so much. Some people are wondering how could she kill uh, the doctor. It's important to know that, as far as we, we, um, she sees Candyman, but nobody else seems to. You know, we, we have that bit in the, the hospital bed where he seems to be hovering right over her and then slides under the bed. Then we see the, the footage from the camera and there's no one else there. If there was no one else um, in the room with the doctor, I don't know how she got out of the straps, but maybe if, if we imagine that she hallucinated much of what happened there, maybe the doctor did think that she was okay. Maybe he loosened her straps and then she killed him, and we don't actually get positive confirmation that she, that um, he was stabbed, much less with the um, the hook, because we don't hear anyone say she stabbed this and this doctor. Not in the movie. Maybe she just you know strangled him or something. Just and 